You'd be surprised by the reaction I received by many Muslims. I had Muslims even, I walked through London with recently, he was shocked. I was in London, I come out, I was probably stopped by three Muslims. They embraced me. What's going on, Tommy, man? Like, and I have them say, I don't agree with you. I have someone come up to me. I had some big gang, gang, gang lads in Luton. Big lads walk through town. I thought, here we go. He come over. He, he put his hand out. He squeezed my hand. He goes, I don't like you at all, Tommy. Yeah? I respect you. Hmm. I respect you. You stand for what you believe in. So I, and and I, I don't believe the Muslim, the Muslim community know I'm right. They know I'm right in what I'm saying. When I talk about Islam, they know I'm right. They know I've assessed Islam. I understand what it is. I understand the power of the ideology. I understand the brotherhood of it. I understand the dominant nature of it, the supremacy of it. They And, and they so there's no confrontation to have with me. I'm saying what it is. Mm. I don't want to labour the point, but I mean, there were some racist people. I, I think that the idea of race, racism is exaggerated in this country, this idea that everyone, there's so many racists. But even if just 1% of the society is psychopaths, or you know, they must have some people who are-, are Were there racist. racists in the English Defence League? Yes. Well, yeah. Um, there, is it, was it a racist organisation? No. There was golfers in the English Defence League. It wasn't a golf society. Mm. So are there racists in the Metropolitan Police Force? Yes. Is it a racist organisation? No. Are there racists in the Labour Party? Far more than there were in the English Defence League. Mm. For the Labour Party, I'd say, is the most racist political organisation there is. The most anti-Semitic, full of hate organi- uh, political party we've ever seen. Yeah. Far worse than the BNP. In my eyes, the yeah. Labour Party. Well, those were the two that were uh, held by an independent um, assessor to have been racist, BNP and Labour Party. <laughs> it's meant, wouldn't it? Yeah, I know. The, but the BNP, um, <laughs> it's very fun, the Labour Party. Labour and BNP, Nick the, Griffin and Jeremy Corbyn. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn's far more dangerous than Nick, Nick Griffin. Yeah, well, because no one takes Griffin seriously. No. Nick Griffin's never been censored on any social media. Nick Griffin, who is an out-and-out Nazi, an out-and-out white supremacist, an out-and-out Jew hater, an out-and-out all the things that... He's, he's, he's open about it. Yeah? He's what people think you are. No, he's what people, he's what the media tried to make me. He's what the media, there's no evidence to ever, in fact, from the start of my activism, from our very first demonstrations, we had banners, black and white unite. Muslim, no problem. Extremist Muslim, big problem. National Front, go to hell. We had, we had Islamic extreme, on the first ever United People of Luton rally, we had National Front scum go to hell. We chased the National Front out of our town when they turned up. Luton's football hooligan, demographic, which is what we were part of, is um, has always been very diverse. Mm. Very diverse. The men I aspired growing up to, looking up to with Dreadlock Rasta, respected men in the town. Uh, Luton has never had that. So I've never, I'm not from a predominantly white area or a predominantly white city. I'm from a very diverse city and mm. most of the people I love aren't white. Mm. But that does, and most of the lads I know, so I've had a, a big experience here, um, they're English. Yeah? And now I've got people telling me, no, they're, they're not English. When I've started my movement and I'm going around the country and I'm like, he's not English, he's black. Yes, he fucking is English. Mm. Yeah? He is English and he loves England and he loves Britain. And I've got lads, black lads that have joined the Royal Marines. What are you saying that they've got to go? So I have all this with the FNATs. The FNATs hate me. The ethno nationalists hate me. I'm a race traitor. I'm a Zionist. I'm all these different mm. things. Have you, I spoke at the beginning about when, when I grew up, Tommy Robinson's the worst word or name you can possibly hear. Have you noticed what I think a lot of people have noticed in just the last few years, particularly I think in, it's, it's heating up the last year, a complete change in the way the average person on the street perceives you? Um, massive change. There's been a, a mass awakening. What's going on? Uh, COVID. COVID. See, when we got deplatformed, people celebrated it. They didn't even listen. I've never been, I've never been arrested for hate, hate crimes, racist crimes. I've never been questioned under them. Yeah? Mm. What I say is factual. You may not like it, but it's factual. If I talk about Islam, it's factual. Talk about Quran, it's factual. The problems in the UK, they're factual. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not inciting violence. Okay, so um, I've seen it was all right when we were getting deplatformed. People liked it, celebrated it. Then all of a sudden, COVID hit, and lots of people were questioning it. And then they saw uh, scientists getting deplatformed. Yeah, they saw nurses getting deplatformed. And then they saw the lies. Those people who joined the freedom movement, who wanted just to have freedom of their own body, yeah. They realise they're getting called far right. They're now called anti-vaxxers. They're now called conspiracy theorists. The attacks against them were the same as the attacks against us. Just you go against any of the any of the mainstream narratives, they're attacking you. So, yeah, I think I, I've ma- I've noticed massively. I get so many messages of people who hated me, and, and again, I don't look. As I said, I was twenty five years old, and I was leading the biggest street protest movement the country's seen. I was young. Um, I was angry, very angry about what was happening. Um, could we have conducted ourselves better? Yeah, of course we could. Would anyone have listened to us? No, they wouldn't. Mm. Would you know about the issues we were talking about? No, you wouldn't. 
Do you think nowadays, in addition to the COVID issue that you raised, do you think it also might be a lot of the things that you predicted seem to be coming true? I mean, we perhaps when you were talking about this and the percentage of extreme Muslims in this country, in, in the UK, was still quite relatively low. People did, thought, oh, he must be a racist or whatever. Now it has, it's risen quite fast. Well, no, I was just, I, there was nothing special about me. I'd just grown up in Luton. So mm. Luton was a blueprint for the rest of the country. When Islam becomes dominant, as I said, the peaceful ones become irrelevant because you know, they're not going to stop these groomers. They're not going to stop the terrorists. They're not going to mm. pawn them. But we still have to bring them on side as much as we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, which I, uh, yeah, I, I, I agree, mm. but we can't rely on them. They're not going to solve the problem for us. We can't mm. keep funding the Muslim groups. Like, it's insane. They're, they're Muslims, <laughs> when the grooming scandal hit, Muslim organisations, not non-Muslim organisations, there's a Sikh organisation called Sikh Awareness Society mm -hmm. who have for 20 years, 30 years, longer than I have, yeah, they were on this grooming issue. They were travelling. Uh, they have sent, I think, 10 girls, they've relocated 10 girls abroad to save them. Yeah, from, And they don't just deal with Sikh girls. They're a fabulous organisation. Look them up. In fact, the man who runs them, his name's Mohan Singh. 